Yeah. Hello and welcome to Stratford Paddock. This is the preview for Manchester United against Brighton in the Carabao Cup. We're away at Brighton again, Alex. It's great, isn't it? Same game, same fame. Do you think they're still stuck down there in the hotel or do you think they've gone back up and gone back down? They must have gone back home. Do you think? Yeah. Oh, I thought they'd have stayed. No, I they suppose... need to train a bit, don't they? Kid, yeah, they do need to yeah. train, but surely they can train on some local astroturf down in Brighton or on the beach. No. Like something from like a cool football film. Football beach guys. Right, we're going to be looking at a little bit of the game from the weekend, whether we can draw any conclusions from that game. Moving forward to this game, of course, tomorrow night. Um, let's start then with that last game on Saturday. That was a real whirlwind of a match, wasn't it? Was it was hard, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Second half was a lot better for Man United. I think they kind of figured things out a little bit. And yeah. They, they do did look like they were almost gaining match sharpness as the game got on a little mm. bit. They looked like they started to play the right passes and things like that. They, they looked better. Still players not quite fit. But Brighton, in they created some chances, but at the same time weren't very good either. They're still not a very good team. It's not mm. like, oh my God, Brighton were unbelievable. They've just, we're a bit shaky and they've got a couple of good players and it just, that kind of showed. And they did a good job, to be fair, of Brighton. I'll give them credit for, they saw that weakness on our right-hand side. wan was getting drawn toward the ball whenever the ball was over on yep. our left. They were crossing that ball in and time and time again, different people each time yeah. were finding space on that left-hand side for shots and for for um, for good possession in that back post. And then eventually they scored from that, of course. Yep. Um, now, uh, we know we won, obviously. We did. I remember that one. Is that a spoiler for some Spoiler people? for anyone who <coughs> hasn't seen the game yet. If you're catching up, if you're on like Man United season six and you haven't caught up to 2020 yet, um, we did win that game, we so I apologise. Just kind of, eventually. Uh, we barely won. We just snuck it over the line just after the full-time whistle, which was a new one to me. Yeah. Um, how are we going to address that 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 problem that we had? They they hit the post five times or, or woodwork five times. They kept hitting that back post. It was quite impressive almost. You know when you, you're like you're watching boxing or you're watching fighting yeah, and yeah. you see that a puncher or a fighter knows that a certain punch is getting through time and time again, a hook to the body or yeah, yeah. whatever it is. They can set up a certain pattern time and time again and they just keep doing it. Yep. You don't usually see that in football, but they literally saw, if we get the ball on the right, if we put it over, over to the left, there is space on that side yeah, behind Wamasaka every single time, and they kept exploiting it. How are we going to stop that? For I the think a game? lot of that comes down to, look, Mason Greenwood is a very good player. I don't think, I don't think his natural position is a right winger, so I think his defensive duties he's still not quite hmm. sure on, wasn't tracking back. And also, the midfield we had, Matic does a very good job of sitting, but Pogba and... Um, and Bruno are both players that go forward. We didn't really have anyone to kind of cover in for wan -Bissaka. Now, yes, wan got drawn over a little bit. Mm. Maybe that was a bit of first, second game back. First game back in the Premiership, maybe a little bit slow. Um, I'm not sure how you fully cover that, especially if you want to rotate your team a little bit, mm. which is what I've done. But again, maybe three at the back might have worked a little bit better, which yeah. they changed to towards the end of the but game, they, didn't they? They, they brought still scored after that, though. They still scored after that, yeah. yeah. But... I don't know. It, no. it depends. It's they should know it by now. They've watched. They must have watched the game back. And again, we're probably going to rotate a little bit. Mm. It, it might not be as much as maybe I've gone for or whatever. But they, we're going to rotate a little bit. But Brighton are going to do the same because mm. for as much as these small teams, it's their best chance at a trophy kind of thing that yeah. everyone kind of says. They also know that the tax that it puts on them in the mm. Premier League and staying in the Premier League is more important than anything for Brighton and. Maybe if they'd have won at the weekend, they yeah. could have afforded to put a full-swing team out and not, they're not. But, you know, they need to focus on the Premier League. So I maybe they have to rotate a little bit as well. I think that's where the hierarchy of the Cups comes in, doesn't it? Because yeah. if you get to a, you know an FA Cup quarter-final, semi-final, they're not going to rest players then. No. But in a Carling Cup third round... Carabao Cup fourth round actually is as it is now they might even someone like Brighton who as you say that's the best chance of winning a trophy they still might rest players because yeah. they've they've got to put the Premier League first yeah. um, moving on a little bit then uh, actually just before we do move on because something with you know I know Greenwood isn't isn't a right winger um, and he's been asked to play then he's, he's done brilliantly going forward he's been fantastic yeah. if Solskjaer said to him right you stay forward We'll let Matic and Pogba uh, cover their man and Wembasak is good defensively, so you don't have to get back. That's one thing. But even if you're 18 or you just turned 19, even if you're not used to being a right winger, you know you have to track your man back. Yeah. I, and I, it's not, you know, I don't want to have a go, too much of a go at him for it. But if you're playing as a right winger, you have to track your, your fullback or your the winger back can help your fullback out. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't think it takes many conversations with a player 
to say, here's their two men on this side, yep. or they're putting an overlap because the central midfielder's coming out to that side, or whatever it may be, you have to cover that man. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's too much to ask for him. And maybe his fitness isn't there and that could maybe excuse it because getting up and down all day yeah. is difficult if your fitness isn't quite there. But everyone knows when you're a winger, you have I to track your man back. I still think there's a little bit in this, in the whole team of Man United, especially defensively, where it's still, you know, it's still pointing fingers and blaming other people mm. for mistakes that happened. You know, there was the thing about, Lin you know, the big one was in the, was it the Sevilla game where Bruno had a go at Lindelof. Yeah, screaming or, at each other, weren't Screaming they? at each other. And, and I think there's a little bit of that where, you know, if someone makes a mistake, it's mm. why didn't you do that? Instead of wan saying to Greenwood, you need to come back here. Mm. You know, is it Lindelof or Maguire saying, look, you need to stay out there, don't mm. get drawn in and communicate. And I think that the team itself doesn't have the leaders in all the aspects. I think there's a few developing, but I don't think in all the positions where there's someone strong enough to say, look, you need to do a better job here. You need to do that. I'm doing it in the game. And I think that, because Ollie did it, Ollie recognised it and that's mm. why he made the change. But yeah. then the communication on the pitch wasn't, you still need to make sure you're pushing out to that and you yeah. still got punished. We did. Um, yeah. Looking forward then, or, mo or looking further at the pitch, should I say, Bruno Fernandes is someone I want to single out because he plays, he's, he's weird because toward the end of last season, I think we can all say, look, Leggy, he still was yeah. getting goals through penalties and stuff like that. And I know he got a penalty at the weekend. Um, I think he's getting some unfair criticism, Bruno Fernandes. And it's a weird thing to say yeah. because I know he's had so many plaudits and you always see yeah. this thing where he first comes in, he's scoring loads of goals, getting loads of assists, everyone can't stop raving about him. Then you go, everyone's looking at him under a microscope yeah, then yeah. because he's, is he one of the best players in the league? Is he United's best player? We have to now evaluate him uh, on, a, on a sort of a global context. So now you're looking for every single f fault and he gives the ball away and he tries some flicks that don't come yeah, off. Yeah. But I don't think his performances have dipped as much as people think they have. I think he was no. excellent against Brighton. That pass down to, to Marcus, I know he had a lot to do before he put that ball in the back of the net. Good. It was a ridiculous pass. Uh, his potency in front of goal and laying people off and passing and he, the way he, he plays balls into the box in front of people's feet so consistently yeah. and it's such a difficult thing to do. I thought he was really good against Brighton, probably maybe our best player. Do you think he's... He, because people have really sort of gone, oh, actually, he might be really good. Now we're holding him to a standard that I don't think is necessarily fair. Or do I you think, think he, he deserves some of the criticism? I think the, the criticism's come in, I think, a little bit rightly slow in terms of, I think that all the players are tired. It's not just... Yeah. The thing is, Pogba got singled out again at the weekend for mm -hmm. not having a great game as well. Bruno especially. But the whole team itself all has the same kind of thing. They all look a bit leggy. They all look a little bit not quite sharp. There's all, you know, there's the odd touch that's bad. They're trying it maybe too much. They're mm -hmm. not keeping things simple. Whatever it is, they're doing, it's almost the same mistakes that they're all making. They're all not quite sharp enough yet. They're all missing a pre-season, which, you know, I think people mentioned at the weekend, look what Wolves are like, look what City mm -hmm. are like. They're all, you know, there's a lot of teams now that are doing the same kind of thing. They're all making the same kind of mistakes and they all look like they're missing a pre-season. But I think that Bruno's kind of done it to himself where, he has raised the standard mm. at Manchester United and he did very well in that time. There's going to be a bit of a second se season mm. syndrome. You know, there's there's going to be a bit of that and he kind of has to ride that out a little bit. Mm. Like you said, find his level in the team where, he's, where he is. And in the same way that we were relying on Pogba to do everything before, we can't rely on Bruno to do everything. We can't no. rely on these, but we need, the team needs to be playing well. And I think that's the whole point is that Bruno is getting singled out because he isn't doing things on his own like he was at mm. some point of last season. I think what needs to happen is that the whole team needs to step up mm. in general. And hopefully you'll see the, the standard of the players step up and he'll get back to the levels he was towards the end of last season. Yeah, definitely. I just think everyone's been... Oh, yeah, it's way too harsh. Really going, is he as good as De Bruyne? Is he one of the best players in the world? And, and maybe he's not, but I think he's he's been absolutely sensational yeah. for United. Um, and I thought he was very good against Brighton. Um, looking forward then, you talked about Paul Pogba there. That's, you know, both games he's featured in, uh, or certainly both Premier League games he's yeah. featured in this season. He's looked a bit shaky, he's looked a bit ropey, most notably giving the ball away from that deep position, which is something that I praise Matic for more than anything, I mean, alongside his positioning, is yeah. he just doesn't give the ball away. And I know, of course, he does, but compared to Fred, compared to McTominay, compared to Pogba as it's turning out, he loses the ball so few times. Uh, that that's why he's so assured in that position. Paul Pogba, do you think it's a case of tiredness? Do you think it's a case of he's not used to playing in that number six role and he's getting sort of, you know, like a bit itchy feet because he wants to be more creative, so he's trying things from a deeper role? Or do you just think, you know, he's just not having a great time and, and you've got to give him some time? I think there's a bit of catch-22 with it where you've got, 
I think all the players need game time to get yeah. sharpness. That's why they do. That's why I usually do pre seasons. What usually they play three or four games before the season starts. But at the same time, now there's pressure on it. So those balls that you give away in pre season now matter because it's costing us goals and costing us points. Whereas at the minute, you know, I, I saw a couple of clips of Paul Pogba where he's just he's missed the simple forward pass. It's mm. not even, and he's tried maybe the wrong one rather than not just him misplacing it. He's just picking the wrong pass. Yeah. I think he needs to play. I think, again, it's a bit of a catch-22 at the minute, especially with this log jam of fixtures we've got where we're going to be mm. playing Wednesday. Hopefully, they get a break over the internationals. Hopefully, a couple of players get to have that break. But mm. with Pogba, I don't know. I think that maybe you need to rest him again this week and then for Tottenham, it'll be okay. Maybe he only plays half an hour midweek this week. I think there's something yeah. to that. I don't know. There's, like I said, there's a bit of a catch-22 where if you keep playing them when they're not match fit, they're going to keep making mistakes. The confidence is going to go down. You're going to have the situation like you had on Saturday where you yeah. had to bring him off after an hour because he just wasn't doing it. Or you play him through it, you accept that mistakes are going to happen, and then hopefully by the weekend, mm. you know, we've had three games now, that he's match fit and he's ready to go against, against Tottenham. Yeah, for me, Pogba looks like the sort of player or he's in the position where it's he needs minutes to get yeah, his fitness I think back so. rather than he's overtired, he needs a rest. Well, he, I think as well, you forget they had m such a massive break last season, didn't play a lot of games at all, and then he kind of got rushed back into that, yeah. that condensed fixture list. Maybe, I don't know, the guys, United guys know more than we do mm. in terms of what these players need, and I think that Pogba, I think they'll do, it's one of those, I think if he starts tomorrow, it'll be the right thing, I think if he's rested tomorrow, it'll be the right thing. Mm. I think both of those have very good arguments for, for why you do that. Right then, let's get into our predicted 11s. Do you want to go first, Alex? Yeah, I'll go through mine. Um, start well off in goal, got Dean Henderson. I think he played mm. well in the last game. I think he's going to play all the cup games. Yet to be seen whether he plays Premier League games, Champions League games, what else he does. I don't think he's got enough of just playing uh, Carabao Cup and, and FA Cup this season. I think he's going to need to play some more elsewhere. Back four, I've, I've gone for a bit of a rotated squad. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone for Fosu Mentor at right back. Uh, I think at wan -Bissaka do the rest but it wouldn't surprise me if he starts he did a lot of games last season even the Europa League uh, Maguire I think is going to play every game whilst he's fit Eric Bay in there kind of torn between this one because I want him to start against Tottenham on mm. Sunday but I still think he needs game time so I think he'll start and then Brandon Williams at left back I think Luke Shaw is going to be rested uh, midfield I've gone again rotated I've gone for Fred McTominay I think that they worked well last season and I think that if we're going to rotate them, they work well together. Um, Lingard and then middle three, front three, whatever it is. Three behind the striker of Lingard, Van der Beek, Mata, which was the same one that played against uh, Luton last yeah. week. But then I've gone for Greenwood up front. I don't think Igalo Ooh, quite nice. did enough yeah. for uh, to keep a spot in that team. Also, I don't think. If you want to beat Brighton, you can't put the same team that struggled against Luton. No. So again, a little bit, feels like a little bit stronger. I think Matic getting a rest, I think. Got a big game on Sunday mm -hmm. against Tottenham. And we for have. as much as, you know, we want to win this cup competition, I think that if we drop any points in the Premier League, there's going to be ridiculous scrutiny on Oli. Again, catch 22 for him. Does he rest players this week, potentially get knocked out and then have we'll a foot team for, for, for Sunday? For Sunday yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a rotated squad. It just shows that we're still lacking players. Mm. I think that this is why I reported this morning on, you know, Saar coming in and people going, it's ridiculous. Why, why are we signing someone like that? For games like this, exactly mm. games like this, where that he would do an extremely good job and would add a little bit more quality than Lingard, a little bit more pace than Mata. So so one of them doesn't have to play as many minutes. I don't quite think, especially against a team like Brighton, mm. don't quite think they're good enough. No. Um, it's still quite a strong team, but like I said, it, it does have some of those areas where you just think, yeah. oh, that, that that whole three behind the behind the striker might not do much on any given yeah. day. So th that's always a concern, isn't it? Yeah. I've gone for a much stronger much stronger team than that. Yeah. Um, I think to me, a lot of our players look like they need minutes. Yeah. Um, I've gone with uh, Henderson. Um, I've gone with Wan Bissaka. I've gone with Maguire and Lindelof. I've, I've put in again, again maybe with an eye to to buy playing at, at the weekend. But I just think they look like they need play time together. So yeah, makes Luke sense. Shaw as yeah. well, um, Matic. Uh, and, and Van der Beek because I've, I've dropped Paul Pogba for this one because I think if, he, if he, he's going to play against Spurs Pogba yeah. I can't see him not playing against Spurs um, so I've gone with those two in there um, and also because it's a bit of a longer break I know it's not too long but Wednesday to Sunday it's I think that, that extra day no, yeah. I think maybe Matic can recover from that um, and I've also gone with, with Bruno in there as well then I've gone with Greenwood um, like I said Bruno and uh, uh, Rashford 
and then Martial. So essentially yeah. the same team that played the other day, um, except we've seen Van der Beek for, for Pogba and uh, Henderson for De Gea. I just think that if you go down to you go down to Brighton, I know they've, they've like I said they probably haven't stayed there, but in no, my but head it's like your little road trip to Brighton, <laughs> playing them twice and we'll come back like some basketball or like NFL <laughs> thing where you're like we're doing West Coast yeah, tour, the South teams. Coast tour. Um, you just sort of think you need to go there and win both games. And I know yeah. that if anything, it's I never want to say this because I really do think Solskjaer needs to win a trophy. There is part of me that thinks if we get knocked out of this. Might not be the worst thing in the world, but I don't think Solskjaer is going to think like that, and no. I don't think he should think like that. I think if you're a, a fan who's like got like a FIFA mindset or like a or the fitness and and they need this and they need that and who cares about the Carabao Cup? Well, actually, if Solskjaer wins any trophy at Manchester United, it's such a great basis for him to move on and yeah. work forward next season. If we end this season with fourth place in the Carabao Cup, that's that's got him another year. Then I think so, and, definitely. And I just think that. He will take this competition more seriously than than maybe we would as fans looking at, well, it's going to be a truncated season and they've got an extra fitness and all these things to worry about. I think go with a strong team, beat Brighton twice in a row, don't allow them to sort of bring back any confidence or sort of... We, we, there's already... It's a strange match the game that we just played against Brighton because we won, but and it, and it was a great feeling toward the end of the game. But actually, the performance was pretty horrific, and we yeah, it wasn't to lose. Good. Yeah. So I don't really want to end that little tour to Brighton with one game that we scraped by a win and we should have lost, and one game we lost. Yeah, or that's not ideal, is it? So going through on penalties or something exactly. like that. Exactly. So let's let's play a strong team. <clears throat> hope maybe they don't play such a strong team. Yeah. Beat Brighton. They've got four days rest still, or not rest, but you know, four days, full days until the next game. Um, just beat them and, and, and go from there because yeah. I don't I don't think it's good to start the season with two losses in four games. I think there's I said I think there's arguments to both of them. I think yeah. the players at the same time hectic starts the season a lot of games mm -hmm. need rest, but also no pre season need minutes and it's that it's yeah. that balance that Ollie's got to try and figure out, whether it's kind of a team in between the two of ours. Maybe you see a Van der Be uh, a Bruno get dropped into my team, maybe you see a and Igalo go into your team mm -hmm. where it's something like that. That probably would happen as well. Again, I'm a bit unsure of how Ollie's going to go for this. Yeah, I think I think you're right there that he needs to win a trophy. I think that's mm. that's one of the one of the things he needs to do this season. And for as much as we going you know, to romanticise about winning the Premier League, that's not looking that likely. You know, there's yeah. a lot of teams that are in better positions. Yeah, than why us. would why would we <coughs> close 33 points on Liverpool? Right now, you, you don't see it. If we'd assigned yeah. another three or four players, you'd have seen that. But yeah. at this moment in time, there's, we're nowhere near that. No. Um, so the two best chances we have of winning trophies are the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Mm -hmm. So does he take them seriously at the same time? If you take them seriously and then don't win them and then you hurt your league form, yeah. it's... It's a tough balance. It's a tough balance. It's the balance of a team that that isn't where it should be, isn't it? No, it's the balance it's, of a team that's fighting for fourth and fighting for the well, lesser trophies. United need to be more than that, but unfortunately, that's where we are. Well, there's a reason why City have won this so so yeah. regularly is because they've got the bigger squad. It means yes. that in these earlier rounds, they rest 11 players and they're... They've they're, still got Gundogan and, and yeah, Gabriel Jesus playing. Yeah, that's what I'm, which we just, ca we just don't have. And for as much as City didn't look quite as good last year and they looked poor at the weekend and they've got problems at the back, their second string forwards mm. are on another level to what ours are yeah, at the moment. Bernardo Silva. Well, I mean, there's, I said there's a few injured right now for them, mm. but at the same time, they've, they've still got what looks like more in reserve to what the, what we yeah. have. They've got the, one of the biggest squads in Europe. At this moment in time, we're, yeah. we're struggling with that. It's, it, there's a reason why Liverpool haven't really gone on mm. in, in the Cups. They win because one trophy a year. They've won the Obviously one trophy. it's been the big two. They've done well in, they, they did well in the Champions League, mm. but at the same time, you know, they can't play Mane, Firmino and Salah in these games. They need to have the break yeah. of them. And they don't have anywhere near the same level. They've strengthened a little bit this season. Maybe they'll go a little bit further this year. Mm. But I mean, you saw last season with Liverpool, they were literally playing their under-18s. Because they, the they couldn't do it. Because their whole team needed a rest. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It'll yeah. be interesting to see exactly what happens. Have you picked Van der Beek in your team? I have. We've both gone with Van der Beek. I think he's looked good both times he's played. He needs more minutes. Are you expecting big things from him? Or do you think he'll be more of that... Not that he wasn't good, but you, you expected more of a sort of Ander Herrera type, industrious. I don't he can get a goal, he can get an assist, he can put a tackle in. Or do you think it'll be more the sort of Bruno end of the spectrum? Where I don't know. It's it's a strange one because when when he came in and played that first game and, and got his goal against Palace, yeah, that to me kind of thought that okay maybe he's going to mm. do a lot more of this. Um, I'm surprised he didn't get maybe more minutes against um, Brighton. Brighton this weekend. I'm surprised he didn't start considering that Pogba's not quite yeah. not quite there. So there's my 
strange thing with him. I think that if there was going to be a time to play him, he he's had a little bit longer than Pogba to mm. to get into the team. I'm surprised he's not played more minutes, but I'm hoping he scores some more goals. It'd be mm. good to get more goals in midfield because last season, I think I saw a stat the other day. I think we scored like our front three. And that was Mason who scored most of his goals after the break, scored like 67% of our goals last season. Yeah. We need to get more goals from elsewhere unless you're going to have the way Liverpool did it where they have two strikers scoring 35 goals, which I, I can see Rashford and Martial doing and Greenwood doing, but I think it's better when, when you can get 10, 15 mm -hmm. goals from midfielders. It makes a massive difference. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, Van der Beek will be interesting to see whether he does that sort of Pogba role or whether like sort of playmaking from deep or whether he tries to bring the ball forward yep. a little bit more and, and arrives in the box as we saw against Palace it seems like that's one of his key attributes is yep. almost that sort of Lampard I hate to say it but known for arriving in the box at the right time putting yeah. the balls in the back of there, having yeah. those easy chances because your movement and your timing yep. is so good exactly. so hopefully we'll see that from Brun, uh, from uh, Van der Beek this weekend let us know in the comments what you your score prediction for the game first of all and what you think the team lineup will be it's an interesting one the team lineup there's a lot of ways this can go. We might see a heavily rotated squad, more to what Alex has suggested there, or, as I've predicted, maybe it'll be essentially the Premier League team, get two wins against Brighton in a row, have a little rest, play uh, Spurs on Sunday. So let us know what you think What's in your the score comments prediction? below. I'm going to go, as things stand at the minute, obviously when your teams come out, you're not quite certain. I'm going to go 2-1 United, another tight game. I can't see us blowing them away after how it was at the weekend. No, i I want to go the same. I think 2-1 United. Two Probably 2-1 United. United sounds good. We're going 2-1 United. Let us know in the comments again what you think. We're going to be here for the watch along, for the team news, all of that good stuff uh, for the game. We're going to be back tonight as well for Transfers Live. It looks as though United th have got three players leaving this week. It's great, isn't Three it? players in 30 minutes. <laughs> we'll have a little, little bit of a look into those deals because I'm not quite happy with that uh, Andreas Pereira one, personally. I think we're being stitched up a little bit there. Uh, um, but okay. we'll talk about that on Transfers Live tonight, live at 9 PM and again, as I've said, we'll be back for all the watch along, all the preview, all the review, the fan cams. Everything. Hopefully, United get through this Carling Cup tie against Brighton. We'll see you in a bit.